A string is composed of a series of contiguous characters where each character is encoded using the ASCII system. The ASCII system allows us to convert characters into their numerical value equivalent and vice versa. For example, the lowercase letter A can be represented by the number 97 using the ASCII system. And then we can store that value 97 in memory as a byte. A string behaves in a similar way to how the array data structure works. So make sure you check out the array video that I've done. In strings like arrays, we can easily access a character by index in O of one time and traverse the string in O of n. In the same way that we can index arrays, we can also index strings. For example, this first letter in the string that corresponds to S of zero. And in JavaScript, you can actually access it like that. And then the last spot would be S of uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five or also the length of the string minus one. In this sense, we have contiguous elements that need to have memory allocated towards each of the characters in the string. A critical detail to know about the string is that in JavaScript and other languages, strings are immutable. So immutable means that we can't alter a string after it's been created. If we would like to append a character to a string, we need to take a copy of the whole string and then add our element, which means that this operation is O of N and not O of one. So if we wanted to add on the character one here, each character has already been allocated a bit in memory between um, at a certain memory address for the index zero up to the index five. And if we need seven memory slots or zero to the sixth index, we need to find the next free bit of memory in which we have those six or seven consecutive blocks of memory. And then we need to copy each of the characters and then append it to the end there. When solving string related algorithm questions, it's important to keep this in mind because this com time complexity can add up. So up until now, we've been relying on the heuristic that if we have a nested for loop within another loop, that's going to be O of N squared. However, any O of N operation that's nested within a for loop will be O of N squared. Thus, we need to be mindful of our string operations within for loops as it affects the time complexity. So for this reason, it can often be a good idea to split a string into an array of characters because we can append elements to an array in O of one time. And I think the best way to demonstrate this is to actually jump into some string related algorithm questions. And then we can actually see this time complexity, how it adds up by doing string manipulation within loops. So we're going to see that and also how we can overcome that if it's possible to do so. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.